Today's video is sponsored by miHoYo and their game Tears of Themis. A story-based romantic detective game set in a law firm. In this game you battle with your wits using intuition, emotion, and logic to get through debates as well as looking around finding evidence and clues so that you can solve mysteries around Stella's city. I personally love mystery solving detective games like this, so at this point I was already sold, especially with the three dimensionality of some of the objects you interact with. But in addition to all those game mechanics, there's also the romancing part of the game where you get to know four different characters and you can actually play games with them and interact with them to increase your affection level and learn more about them and their stories. The illustrations of them are dynamic and the voice acting is stunning. <laughs> Overall, the game just feels incredibly high quality and polished. Each episode of the game contains unique mysteries to solve, but they all come together to help uncover the abnormality at the heart of Stella City. And right now, the game is featuring a special event called the Romantic Rail Getaway, where you'll get to explore the savanna, the rainforest, and a vintage train. These new locations bring with them new adventures and stories to follow along with, as well as new cards to unlock. This event is only here for a limited time, so you don't want to miss it. Check it out in the link below, and thank you so much to miHoYo for sponsoring the video. Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And on my last video, I confessed that I really wanted to make a VTuber, which is essentially a face-tracked original character that you can literally embody through the power of technology. I got the original character design as well as a couple extra outfits for her done in part one, but today is where the real work begins. So now that we have all that design work done, it's time to get into the scary part where we actually do the final artwork that's going to be the model. This is the most important part because this is really the foundation um, before we get into rigging and all of that kind of stuff. This is what the model is really going to end up looking like. So I really took my time with this. Um, if you are there for the stream where I started this, you'll see how slowly and carefully I made all of these little parts. And truthfully, I am someone who hates using lots of layers. Like I try to keep it down to like four layers, uh, one for the sketch, one for the ink, one for the flat colors and one for the shading. I'll usually put like a quick highlight layer at the very very end but basically I don't like tangling with layers and there were so many in this because in order for the VTuber model to work in the program every single piece that you would ever possibly want to move has to be separated which means her neck had to be separated from her head. Her head had to be separated from each facial feature. Um, each side of her hair tendrils had to be separated. Each ear had to be separated. It was just a lot of layer folders with a lot of different sort of stuff going on inside. And truthfully, I was using up a lot of my brain power just trying to figure out how I can layer everything for it to look like good and proper. Um, because, you know, any sort of overlapping was happening like actually in the program instead of me sort of faking it with, you know, uh, drawing tricks and whatnot. Um, as you will see, I pretty much stuck to her original design, even though I did all that exploration with other outfits. Um, I do think I'm actually going to probably make those other outfits as well, and I'm going to have to rig those completely separately, which will be quite an adventure. Um, but I think that I really like the idea of her being able to switch outfits, so that's definitely something um, if you guys were really in love with like the overalls outfit or something, don't worry. I will probably be making an alternate version where that will show up. And I was really trying to think about how this thing would move. It's really important while you're drawing a uh, model like this that you're considering that because you really need to know what needs to be separated. For example, in the hair, uh, some models, it seems like have tons and tons of separation in their hair and others, pretty much the hair is like, has a front layer and a back layer and that's all they need. It really depends on how much you want your character to move. So I, as someone with no experience in it, I was very nervous to be clumping too much together. I made more layers than I thought I would even need and it all ended up being quite useful. So uh, in the end, it wasn't really, it wasn't really overdone. Now at first it may look like I didn't make any changes to her design from the final to the original sort of uh, design that I had going on, but I actually did make two 
relatively major changes. First of all, her long sleeves that are such a big part of her overall silhouette and her whole setup. Um, I added two of these like black dots up to the top to make it look like a little ghost. Um, it's a simple thing, but it's, it's the type of character design thing that I just absolutely love. And I think it adds a lot of ghostiness to her design um, so that she's not just reading as a goth cow, but more as a ghost cow. Um, the other big thing that I haven't added in yet but that I decided I was going to add in in the sketch was that I wanted to add one of those little cow earrings that the, the cow tags they put on their ears. I really wanted her to read, um, you know, also as a cow. I wanted to kind of amplify these two aesthetics just a tiny bit from her first original design. And I thought that um, with the movement, if I could figure out a way to make the tag sway when she moves her head, that it would add a lot of charm to this character. Um, I'm going to put a little, a little goof in the tag as well um, with the numbers. So you'll see that when she's all finished up. Um, but other than that, yeah, she may basically say it's the same. Um, I made slight like proportion changes very very slightly um, from the original drawing from her but I did end up staying relatively close to the original design which I will tell you doesn't always happen for example in my webcomic planchette used to only have one eye so um, I'm not adverse to changing my initial designs but in this case I just really fell in love with her I think the program that I'm using to draw this is Clip Studio, but it's really useful to use whatever drawing program you can that can export in a PSD. Clip Studio is one of those, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. It can really export to basically any file type that you would want. Um, but because I'm going to be using Live 2D Cubism and they like to have imports in PSDs, um, it's something you definitely want to consider before you do all of your finalized drawing for your VTuber. Um, basically the, the benefit of that is that if you import into Live 2D with a PSD, it keeps all of your um, like uh, layer orders as well as the titles of the layers uh, exactly as they were in your drawing program. So it makes it a lot easier. It would be quite a bit of a mess um, if you don't use that functionality. So that's something that you should consider. <laughs> um, as I worked on her, again, I basically kept it very close to the original design. I just got really attached to it and I ended up thinking that it really represents her the best. I tried to put in some texture and stuff into the actual like shading of the fabric on her ribbon as well as her little apron part just because that's one of the things that I think that um, these 2D VTubers really have over a lot of other like sort of animation type things. VTubers use an animation style known as puppetry, um, which allows you to have each of the pieces only like move or warp rather than having to be redrawn um, or be, you know, modeled in 3D or what have you. So you're able to get that really like detailed, hand-drawn, like delicate kind of lines that you would never want to do in a lot of other styles of animation. Right at the end here, I did make one last attempt to make the cowbell work right at the cross of her necktie. I really wanted it to work because I thought about it saying like rest in peace on it because cowbells kind of are shaped like a tombstone. But in the end, I felt like it just made her look too cluttered and I really didn't want that. Finally, I flattened all of those troublesome hundreds of layers and she was ready to export. The next step was terrifying. This is when I had to crack open Live 2D Cubism, which is the program I'm going to use to rig her. Basically rigging just means like putting the rotation and the warping and all the stuff that's going to allow her to move around and track to like my eye movement, my head movement, stuff like that. You need to in the actual program, like basically show the motion tracker, what part is the eyes, what part is the head, and how you want these things to move. So this is kind of like an animation program, I would say. Um, it's designed just specifically for this purpose, so it seemed like the easiest one to use for me. Um, <laughs> I did not know how to use it at all though, and I will be honest, when she came in and had all of those little vertices all over her, I was terrified. I mean, it looked so complicated. Um, I heavily used a tutorial by this um, V YouTuber named Kapako. Um, and if you are looking into using Live 2D yourself, I highly recommend her tutorial. It was a lifesaver. I was still extremely confused though, and I will try to explain what I ended up doing and how I ended up figuring stuff out um, as much as I can, uh, just 
just to try to add to the knowledge of how to use this program and do this rigging stuff. So as you guys can see, all of the like little layers and pieces of her are all labeled the way that they were labeled in the actual drawing program up in the upper left corner. Um, in the lower left corner, it kind of looks like it's the same thing again. And that was the first point of confusion. But basically, this is where you sort them out based on how you want them to animate together. So for example, you don't want to worry about having to move the iris, the eye shine, the eye like lid, um, and the face all separately. So this is where you can basically make folders so that they all interact together. So what you want to do first and what took me forever, I had to keep undoing and redoing and undoing and redoing because I kept doing it wrong. But basically you want to group together anything you think you're going to want to move, starting with the biggest things like say her whole entire body. Uh, anytime you want to move or warp that entire thing, like for her to sway from side to side, um, you want it to be in that like deformer. Now next to it is what's called the parameters. <laughs> this is where it gets really confusing and technical. Um, one thing that helped is actually loading in one of the sample models and it showed me like what the X, Y, and Z are actually referring to and what that really means for your model. Um, I, again, highly recommend doing that as well. If you're gonna try to do this, follow along with the model that they let you look at because it really helps. Um, again, I still was able to get quite confused, but <laughs> but uh, it helped nonetheless. Um, so basically the way the parameters work is they're like keyframes. If you've done any animation, you know what that is. Um, it's basically just a like moment in time or a moment in the animation. Um, at one end is going to be the most extreme version of it to the left or the most extreme to the right. Or alternatively, sometimes it refers to like the most extreme up or down, kind of just depending on what the parameter is referring to. Um, they are already kind of like sorted out in a way, but you want to actually put them in folders because it helps less be less confusing. Um, move is the one I understood the least. Move is anything you're going to want to affect with physics later. So keep that in mind. So it's going to be stuff like hair or anything that like flaps in the wind, essentially. Um, that was something I really truly did not understand, like what is supposed to be in the move folder. It's anything that you want the like built in physics to affect. So I also ended up putting her tag in there, but I didn't initially and it was just confusing mess. Um, yeah, sorting these into the folders was one of the hardest parts. Basically, you just want to do it by the big stuff first and then slowly go down to more specific things like uh, doing her whole arm, then doing her hand and her forearm, then just doing her hand. You want those all to be in sort of like cascading folders. Otherwise, there's all kinds of problems and it gets all confused. There's two types of movement you have to worry about. Um, well, there's technically three, but really two. Um, so there's warping and there's rotating. Uh, rotating is going to be, you know, pretty much what you'd imagine, like rotating, like rotating her sleeve or her head. It's just going to like move it to the side um, in a rotation type way. You're going to want to do stuff like that on the joints, like the shoulders, the elbow, the wrists. Um, the neck between the neck and the head those are all like rotators and you can see me doing it now like basically it just allows all of that to move um, warping is a little bit more complex and that's where you kind of have to sculpt things into the way that you want them to be um, and the way warping works is I mean it's basically like going in with a transform tool on any drawing program and uh, you're gonna be able to completely destroy the pieces if you want to like you can basically deform them as much as you want so the trick is just having a light touch and not doing anything too crazy because otherwise it's just gonna look super weird once she's actually moving. Luckily for me, the program already kind of came with parameters that are going to do the things that your motion tracker is gonna want it to do. So these include things like lightly rotating the um, body so that when you turn, it looks like the VTuber is turning. Um, things like uh, rising up a little bit and right, going down a little bit. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of movement, uh, as well as the actual like tilting to the sides. Um, these are all things that are gonna make your character look more alive because they're actually, you know, moving more than just their head. Um, I found the actual like rotating of the torso the hardest part. Um, it always ended up either looking like crazy boob jig jiggle physics, which was not what I was going for, or just like generally looking like she's melting, um, like a like a Miku Prize figure on a hot stove. Not what I was going for, frankly, at all. Um, but I eventually figured it out. The trick with this that I 
could not comprehend for the first like two hours of me working in this program is the the whole point of the deformer window and all of these folders that you're creating is that with each of these parameters you have the freedom to move any piece that you want and you can mul move multiple different sets of pieces like you can move just the ribbon and also in the same deformer like part of her shoulder um i didn't understand that for some reason i thought that the deformer folders were directly connected to these keyframes but they're really not the keyframes are just like completely unrelated um you make them related by deciding what to move uh <laughs> the keyframes are just really trying to kind of blindly just do whatever you did and change whatever you changed regardless of what deformers you were using. So that's something that really, really confused me forever. And I finally figured it out and I felt so much better about this whole process after that. There are some new challenges when it comes to having a more cartoony style in in, in like creating rigging for a VTuber. Um, I think that a lot of anime style models have very thin line art and it allows you to do more warping without it being sort of like noticeably affecting the line. But when it came to my VTuber model, because her lines are pretty chunky and they're part of the, the character of the model themselves, um, there were some times when the deforming and the warping really, really messed when with my character model and I ended up liking to use the rotators a lot more because of that. Um, there were a few places where I felt like warping worked relatively well but it was only anywhere where the changes were relatively light. Like for example, I used warping on the bangs because they're not moving that much but when it came to her hair tendrils, when I was moving them I kind of felt like the warping was changing too much about the line that actually surrounded those front tendrils and I ended up just mostly moving them with rotators and I feel like that works a lot better with my art style. I highly recommend you play around with which one you use mostly if you're going to be doing this yourself and if you don't have a like super typical anime art style and you have thicker lines. I definitely think the rotator might be more of your friend um, just because the warping and the deforming can really mess with the quality of your line and you will see that when I try to animate the blink. Um, I would say that is the hardest part for me personally with this process because none of the tutorials could really help me with the problems I was having because their um, sample models were in such different styles. So up until this point the hardest part of doing all the rigging was that subtle rotation of sort of the torso and the skirt area. That was all about to change. Um, all of the stuff I had done up until now, other than that initial rotation, was basically just adding in rotation joints and doing very, very subtle like warps and just moving stuff around. Like her eyebrows were so easy. All you really had to do was move them around a little bit and change the angle slightly. And it was going to allow her to emote in all these different ways. I did accidentally pop her head off a couple times, but you know, <laughs> It, it do be like that sometimes. Um, <laughs> but uh, around this point is where things started to get a little bit tricky because as soon as I was done with like say the tilting of the head from side to side, I had to do something that was a lot more complicated which actually involved changing the angles of the face. Now the way that you do this is you link together the X and the Y parts and it creates this weird little grid um, that is a lot more elaborate than the sort of like binary options that you get with like the body and stuff. Um, so I just followed along with again the tutorial and also the uh, sample model to try to figure out how this exactly worked and I realized that each of these quadrants are kind of just the direction that your character is facing. Um, so this is going to allow your VTuber model to actually like look up, look up into the side, look down into the side you get the picture this I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like I'm gonna paint you guys a real picture this was hellish this was absolutely nightmarish like trying to figure out a way to just move her face and warp her face so that it looked like she was looking around was um, frankly, it was Lovecraftian. <laughs> Every time I moved each little piece of her face, it looked horrifying. She looked so like messed up. I thought I was never gonna get it right. It was the first time in this whole process that I felt like I would rather just actually hand animate it, but I eventually figured it out. The way that I basically dealt with it was that I would use a very delicate and very careful sort of perspective-y warp on the 
like facial features, I would scooch over the backing face, I would scooch over the front tendrils and the bangs all together, I would just move them um, without warping or anything, and then I would do some careful warping to move her chin under where her mouth would end up with that like weird perspective warp. The last thing that helped the most, I would say, with making a convincing like turn of the head in both directions is to move the nose, just like to grab it and move it. I thought I was going to have to like warp and change the shape of the nose, but because it's so small and because of like my art style, I felt like actually just leaving it alone and just carefully moving it was the most important thing. Now the reason you want to do that separate from the warping on the face is because presumably the nose is sticking out more than the eyes and the mouth, which means that when she turns her head, it should be moving over way more than her mouth and her eyes. This gives a much more three-dimensional look and it is the secret sauce on how I actually got this to work. Her horn was a huge pain in the butt though. Um, figuring out how to move it along uh, with her raising her face and lowering it and turning um, was really counter to what I would have thought initially and I really again like my my brain was just like if my brain was a computer the fans would be on like all the way it would sound like a macbook running minecraft with shaders or something like it was just like i was i was focusing so hard i didn't even realize how much time had passed i literally did all of this rigging in one day um which i do not recommend frankly you guys i only stopped for like quick junk food meals and then it was back on the computer immediately i started rigging at like 4 p.m ish and i didn't stop until well past midnight um which is not healthy for you frankly don't do that Anyway, health tips aside, I did come up with some useful tips as far as moving the like eyes around so that it looks more convincing. Um, when you're moving the iris part, um, it's really easy to just like grab and move it to the like left and right and up and down and just sort of leave it at that. But I recommend doing both a like move and a slight warp. This will make their eye look a little bit more like actual spherical if at the like farthest point of her looking left or right if you warp the um, actual shape of the iris a little bit uh, and curve it a little bit so that it looks like you know it's actually following the curve of her eye I found that that had a pretty profound effect despite it being a relatively easy and small little edit so definitely give that a try if you're trying to make your own vtuber uh, again it, your your sort of mileage with this technique is going to change based on the style that you draw the eye in and um, I had a lot of problems with the way that I drew the eyes and my art style particularly now when it was time to animate the blink now I was kind of dreading this part because I thought it might be hard and I was correct so um, what you're gonna do now is not a warp or a rotate this is called a deform path and this is like the final boss of rigging um, so this one's a lot different because you actually click on the actual texture so this is the actual texture of her top eyelid um, and then you place all of these little deform dots on the parts that you want to deform and then you can kind of just move them and keyframe them um, but it ended up causing a lot of problems for me because unlike your typical um, VTuber who has a less intense curve over the eyelid, um, mine is really dramatic because it's this cartoony art style. And so as I moved the dots down, they were getting closer together um, because her eye is very not like flat at the top. So as I was moving them down, it was just absolutely crunching this line to pieces. And I was like so confused as to how I could make it look more smooth smooth plus with the eye spikes of the lower like eyelid um I was having a really hard time making it look like her eye was properly closed. I ended up actually really liking how it turned out, but my gosh, I was having to fiddle with it for so long, just trying to make it look natural or smooth. One of the good parts um, to consider if you're stressing about this part and what I should have realized while I was working on it is that um, the blinks are going to be relatively fast, so you don't have to make them like perfect. Now, obviously, if her eyes are going to be like closed for a minute it might look kind of ugly but also i was zoomed in way more than i needed to be um so you know uh by the time 
she's actually like in use I feel like the blinks gonna look fine but I still think this might be a part that I want to edit and change a little bit more later so um, once I got her blink done um, on the one side I had to move her to the other and it was just as much of a pain as the first one I also realized that there were some problems with her actual face texture which I'm going to have to change um, but I couldn't even deal with that at the moment so I was just trying to get through the blink um, now you can see her uh, like backs of her eyes the like actual eye part below the sort of eyeliner part is not moving alongside this deformed path which is a little bit stressful but all you basically do here is you just take the inside of the eye part which you hopefully you've made a folder for and you just squash it all down um, to follow the eye line and amazingly this program does a pretty good job of like filling in the gaps and keeping everything where it belongs um, the hardest part again is definitely the fully closed blink just because you smash so much of like so much texture into one tiny little line um and same problem with the mouth it was a little bit easier but all i had was one open mouth and one closed mouth and you actually have to hide the closed mouth on the edge of the lip of the open mouth which i think is super funny um but this is a better technique i think than what i did with the eyes which is basically like to create my own like closed eye image out of nothing out of just the pieces of the open eye which I don't know it turned out okay but it's not the best um, I think that actually having a closed eye and a closed mouth that you like sneak alongside the open one is a better way to get it all figured out so in here is the physics menu and this is where I got really excited because this is where you can kind of test everything and you can add sort of in program physics which is really amazing so this is where I added in all the move parts which are basically her tag as well as her hair and her her, um, it ended up being her sleeves as well because I wanted them to sway um, so anything you add in here they're going to have an automatic sort of preset physics style with it there's like long hair short hair like chest physics all pre figured out for you and honestly look how good they end up looking I was so scared of this menu because I really didn't understand the physics part and it just sounded hard but it's the simplest thing ever you basically just add in the layers you want the physics to affect and then they have the preset that's all you really have to do um, so it ended up being really simple for some reason one side of her hair was like way stiffer than the other like the scale part the scale number was way lower than the other side of her hair so I ended up actually just increasing the output or yeah the output for everything um, and it's kind of like ended up like maxed out and that made it way more responsive and it just looked really really good by the end of it I was so happy especially with her tag and the way that her face looks as she's moving around I was very I was thinking it was very questionable looking um, when I was doing all of these like all of these presets and all these things I was trying to set up I thought they looked kind of weird and like I was doing a bad job but when everything's moving together it's a lot more convincing so um, you can be a little less hard on yourself than maybe you initially would be um, and yeah I can't wait to see her actually in motion with a motion tracker now this whole process the making of the final model as well as the rigging took so much longer than I expected like the rigging itself I had one sort of like sitting down for it and it ended up taking about nine hours straight just of non-stop work um so we are probably going to have a part three please forgive me for that um and yeah thank you so much for watching to the end of this extremely long video um if you've made it all the way here uh, i genuinely just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart um and i hope you're excited to see her actually debut um because i know i am i i have only grown more fond of her as i continue to work on her so this project has been really really fun and fulfilling for me and i hope it's fun for you guys to watch watch. Um, if you have any questions about this process or any more suggestions about uh, things I can do and gimmicks I can add to her, um, please uh, leave them for me because I am I'm very open to any of that. Um, thank you so much again and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much to my spectacular patrons, including Violet Knights, Mew Mew, Weaselboff, Vigish, Tom the Chicken, Ah, it's Jamal, Kayla Grimes, Rodrigo, Kubo, Momok, 
Alana the Artist, Rylan Parker, Raylan, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Milky Bat, Lilia Lure, The Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Tsubaki, Liliana Hammontree, Michael Lavalie, Cutie Pie, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, Yoboyas T, JJ Jade, and of course, Blibla Blibla.